Hello all, it's the 28th of June 2017, you're here with Dan in Essex UK. Some great temperatures today, it's about uh, 27 to 28 degrees C, you can see the sun's out, and what I've been doing is planting some courgettes and some butternut squashes in here. So you can see what I've got here, now we've got some onions that are already here, and over here you can just about see where I put the, the two butternut squashes over there, and the rest of these are courgettes. And I'm hoping these are going to do well. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'll probably remember that uh, I did indeed have some broad beans in here. And they didn't do well. The black fly got them, basically. I should have paid more attention, but uh, you can't do everything in the world. And uh, they succumbed to black flies. So I took them out and I planted these. And I'm, I imagine that these will do much better. So I've given them a good water in, simply because the ground here really is it's, it's dry. It's like dust. We've not had any real rain. I mean, we did have some rain about a week and a half, two weeks ago, and it really did bucket it down all day, which was brilliant. But uh, really, we need that to happen again because it's so dry around here. So I had to go to the old water trough with the watering can and proceed to water the plants. But uh, hoping these are going to do well. So over here, just behind me, you can see I have indeed the sweet corn plants. And these really are doing well, actually. The stems are incredibly strong and I'm hoping that uh, they're going to do well. If I can get to two, maybe three, if I'm lucky, cobs off of each one of these, I'll be very happy indeed. But um, there's probably a, you know, there's a decent amount here, probably about 30. So if I end up with 60 cobs from these, I'll be very happy indeed with that. And over here, you could see that uh, I've got two berry bushes in here, two blackcurrant bushes. Now, you can see that uh, the raspberry canes are coming up and because I'm letting this allotment naturally develop I'm not 100% sure exactly what I'm going to do with it yet this year is just sort of uh, you know an introduction to this uh, this particular site so uh, I'm leaving things in as they come up with regards to raspberries as well but I have put a few things in as you know including these got here runner beans these are variety of Norma they're starting to get up the canes now we're getting some red flowers on them so they're now that's good, I'm expecting a semi-decent crop off of these. And thank you very much to everybody that told me that uh, there is indeed an asparagus plant over there. So I've got to leave that in, let some asparagus develop. Never grown it before, but uh, I do indeed like asparagus. So we'll see just how, it, uh, just how it does. And what have we got here? Here we have got potatoes. Several different varieties I've got here. You can see they're flowering well. So we've got uh, King Edward here, we've got a steamer, we've got Desiree and Maris Piper. So uh, expecting them to do well. I really I am looking forward to uh, some new potatoes. There's nothing like new potatoes, is there, with some mint. So uh, hoping they're going to do well. I've given everything, as I stated earlier, good water down here because it's so dry. I'm hoping that these potatoes are going to bulk up nicely and uh, have some great... Uh, potatoes, spuds, tatties, whatever you want to call them to eat. And what have we here? Here we go. Now, you may remember, sorry the light's not so good there, is it? I put some courgettes and some, like here, I put some courgettes and some tomato plants in here. They're bush varieties of tomatoes I've got here and the courgettes. So I'm hoping that uh, these are going to do well. I do like courgettes. I remember years ago, I made some, uh, I think it was courgette and apple chutney, and that really was a nice thing to eat. It was nice to sort of even eat on its own, actually. You could put all sorts of herbs and spices in there. Of course, marrows as well. You can stuff them with various bits and bobs. It's just a nice, versatile thing to grow, and uh, they grow very well in the UK climate. So courgettes, marrows, I love them. So here we go, these are the speedy dwarf beans. Now they're doing well actually, you can just about see the flowers on them. So I'm expecting some semi-decent crops off of these. I do like dwarf beans, they're very nice to put in stir fries. And of course these are the bush variety, they're not uh, the ones that climb up the poles. The ones that climb up the poles of course you need supports. But uh, I saw these, I think I don't know where I was shopping, it uh, might have been at the supermarket or I think it was the co-op or something like that and I saw the seeds and just on the off chance I decided to uh, purchase them so they're looking good actually I'll just uh, pan the old camera over them see like this one here look nice healthy leaves and 
things don't seem to want to go at them. Nothing has appeared to have damaged the leaves or anything like that. And if each one of these gives me 10 or 20 beans, I'll be very happy. And uh, you can see the strawberries, the wilds, well not wild probably, but strawberries that uh, I didn't indeed set, but uh, I've left them there. And everything, in my opinion, it's all looking just how I want it to here, really. So, um, with regards to growing your own food, I was thinking that to the time of year is coming up, and indeed it is already there for certain things that uh, you can purchase from locally grown sources. So, for example, um, you know, your local farm shop, if you're still lucky enough to have them, or have one, get down there and support them. You know, when the lovely Victoria plums come out later in the year, why not go down there and get some? Because end of the day, if we don't support local growers, then they're going to disappear. And you've got to remember that the incentive is there in many ways for them to sell their land. Simply because if uh, you can just imagine how much money, if someone had a huge acreage of land, just how much money a developer would pay them in order to uh, take down their orchard and stick a housing estate or a factory, industrial premises for example, on there. So just think how stronger an incentive that is. You know, you can more or less say that uh, they're going to make far more money in the sale of, from the sale of one uh, of their land than they would from years of selling apples or, or plums or cabbages or spuds, whatever. You can just imagine it. So, you know, get out there and support them if indeed you consider that important. Another thing is if you see someone selling some, just a very small time person, someone selling some tomatoes out the front of their house or some runner beans, you know, get out there and, uh, and purchase them because, you know, these people are doing this and at the end of the day, it's so nice, in my opinion, to see things, you know, for sale that people are growing, you know, outside the front, even if it's a few tomato plants or some marrow plants, you know, help that person to continue to do what they're doing because at the end of the day, we don't just want to have uh, everything that can just be bought from a supermarket. We want to have a bit of variety and people do need the opportunities to, for a bit of self-enterprise, so to speak. So get out there and support local growers. So I've got some raspberries behind me and uh, as my long-term viewers know, I'm keeping these. I'm letting them go completely wild probably going to dig up a lot of these canes at the end of the year and either you know dispose of them probably give them away to be honest to people that have told me that they wanted uh, raspberry canes because a lot of people are telling me they want raspberry canes so uh, you know other than just digging these up and chucking them you know it's best for me to give them to people really because all you need is one of these canes and then over the years they will um, what's the term I'm looking for replicate or propagate and then you're going to have loads of lovely raspberries all for free so why not to uh, look to do that if you want some raspberries and you've got a friend who's an allotment here that could maybe be a method you know if you don't have the money to or the will to go down to shop and purchase a cane or a few canes then maybe you could look at getting some like that all about using your sort of brain really and thinking about ways that you can go about doing things so down the established allotment behind me, you guys, uh, you've seen all this before, so I'm not going to uh, go into anything in particular detail, but uh, just if I can get my, what have we got here? Look at them, look. An absolutely fantastic sweet corn just there. I mean, it really looks brilliant. And the kale as well, look at that. All looking really good indeed. Might even, no, in fact, I don't need to pick any of that, do I, due to, uh, the sheer volume in the brassica bed but uh, look sweet corn here look at that all oh, looking good the size of these onions man look at that one massive potatoes i mean look a great crop there all coming on look at that how many meals can you get from this these spuds and <whistles> cabbages look at the size of that one down there Make sure you keep them covered to keep the cabbage white butterflies. I can't see any about yet, so uh, let's hope it stays that way. So yeah, I hope everybody out there is uh, enjoying this great weather. If you're indeed lucky enough to be you know, in a part of the country in which the weather is equally or closely as good as it is today, hopefully it will continue. I'm not exactly sure uh, how it's going to do. Apparently it's going to be warm well into the next week, so good growing season really hopefully so far. Hope you enjoyed that video, take care.
speak soon and all the best.